Well, we've all heard the phrase new economy a lot lately, which can be scary if you think that means you're being left behind. So let's dig into this a little bit deeper with our next guest. Stephen Maheshwari is the Washington State Director of Economic Development and Governor Inslee's lead for information and communications technology. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Emily. Oh, we are so glad to have you this morning. So, Stephen, as a result of the pandemic, we're seeing a shift to a new economy. What does that mean for our viewers? Thanks, Amity. You know, what we're seeing is that the pandemic has caused real shifts to as to what you call a new or even a virtual economy. And that's along three different vectors. Businesses, for example, you know, businesses during the pandemic haven't been seeing the foot traffic that they normally would have due to the restrictions because of the pandemic. And so that's for forcing them to rely on digital transformation strategies, whether that's, you know, if they're a restaurant and they're creating a website to allow people to order online, or they're launching a new e-commerce platform, joining Amazon, or they're plugging into technical infrastructure like cloud computing uh, or data analysis tools to help strengthen their operations. That's sort of one aspect of that sort of digital transformation that that digital economy mm -hmm. consumers conversely like myself are buying more online i know i've done a lot more shopping at amazon than i intended to over the <laughs> pandemic um and and that just means that that there are now a lot more platforms that are responding to this online consumer demand and so those that are in the creative economy or even in the gig economy will now have new platforms to sell their art, their goods, their services, or find more industries that they're passionate about to work from part-time at home. And then lastly, you know, the, the last prong of our economy is thinking about workers. And because of the shifts in the, in the pandemic, as companies go virtual or they're in a virtual hybrid working environment, workers are beginning to rely more on teleworking tools like Zoom and Slack and Google to get their work done. But they're also beginning to learn more uh, about data analysis and web design and engineering just because of the nature uh, of how some of their workplaces are beginning to pivot. And these right. behaviors are going to be sticky. So we expect a lot of these things to continue on into this new economy after the pandemic. And you spoke a little bit about, you know, digital platforms and shopping. I was just guilty with you. Uh, what are some of the emerging technologies you're most excited about? Um, so there are a lot of in, uh, emerging technologies that are already having a huge impact on Washington State's economy. Uh, chief among them include artificial intelligence, 5G, the Internet of Things, uh, blockchain. And I think in a few years, quantum computing is going to be a mainstay in our economy. Quantum computing. All right, I want to ask you about that later. But first, is there anything sure. right now that kind of keeps you up at night about our technology sector? Absolutely. There are several things that are you know, top of mind. Mm -hmm. One, we run a huge talent deficit in Washington state. For every tech applicant there is in, in our state, there are about 10 roles uh, in technology that are unfilled. And that was true even before the pandemic. The pandemic's accelerated it because of the reliance on a lot of uh, technology companies who have been growing and, and continuing to hire. And if we continue to run at that deficit, uh, studies show that you know nationwide, we may have a deficit of up to 5 million jobs in the tech sector. The second thing that I think about is diversity and inclusion, not, not just about uh, supporting underrepresented uh, employees, but thinking about innovation and entrepreneurship. How do we support underrepresented entrepreneurs and their access to capital to get their companies and their innovations into the market? And then how do we expand pathways into technology, into tech careers for BIPOC women, uh, disabled and veteran and other underrepresented communities? And then once they're in the job, at these tech companies, how do we ensure that these companies have an equitable and inclusive environment such that uh, they can retain those employees and make sure that their uh, that their employee workforce represents the demographics of the communities that they're operating in? That's absolutely. And lastly, and this one, and, uh, lastly, I will just quickly say, remote workers. We know so many people are working from remote home. They have infrastructural challenges that commerce is focused on, including access to broadband. There are about 200,000 students who don't even have access to a device. So there's a lot of strain on technology at home and access to childcare. That's another infrastructural burden uh, that you know commerce is focused on and providing grants for. That is the hardest thing for us working parents. We just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for a student or a worker who's trying to navigate this new economy? 
Absolutely. Always be learning. Intellectual curiosity is key. A digital economy means that technologies and skill sets are evolving very rapidly, and that's even more true in a tech sector. Um, the, the things that I'd like to say is, you know, now that there is this proliferation of online courses and low cost certifications programs and classes that are designed to get you into an entry level in tech, there's no reason not to be able to uh, constantly upskill or reskill yourself in these new technology um, skill sets. For example, even if you are in the tech sector, if you're in data analysis or web design, the tools you're using are going to constantly be evolving. You're probably going to be using tools in your career that haven't even been invented yet. So you're going to constantly need to think through and, and be curious about the newest tools that people are using. Lastly, I will say that there are two myths about the tech sector that I'd like to dis, uh, dispel. Mm -hmm. One, you don't need to be a software engineer <laughs> to work in the tech sector. Um, you know, certainly we have a great need for software engineers in our state, but we also have a great need for sales, marketing, product management, data analysis, customer service, and recruiting jobs um, that are all uh, still unmet in our state. The second myth I'd like to dispel is, you know, Amazon and Microsoft are tech titans and they're certainly hiring, but they're not the only tech companies hiring. And, you know, the what I'd like to say is that most tech company, most companies, non-tech companies in our state have tech organizations. Uh, one example being Starbucks, not a traditional tech company, right. but they hire more software engineers than most other tech companies in the state. You so if you want to work at, in tech, you can work at, in tech and in, in any company. Stephen, you make so many great points. We are so grateful for all the knowledge and insight you've shared with us this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And if you're a small business owner in need of financial assistance, you should know that Washington State is about to open the application process for the next round of emergency business grants. Go to commercegrants.com to check your eligibility and find out more about what you need to do to apply.